Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, let me give you a, a run of show so you have a sense of what we're going to do today. Lots of folks who are standing with me who deserve to be here. I want to acknowledge Debbie Cochran, who will be one of the folks who says some words. Uh, after I speak, I'll let uh, Debbie speak. She's the vice president of the Institute for College Access and Success. With me as well is the team that made all of uh, today's announcement possible and who've been, been doing this for quite some time on behalf of California students and actually America's college students. Let me introduce to you Nick Akers, who is our senior assistant attorney general. Uh, Barney, and I want to make, make sure I get it right, Eskandari, uh, who is a supervising deputy attorney general. Mike Ellisoffen, uh, who is a supervising deputy attorney general and Eleanor Bloom, who is a special assistant attorney general. And if you got all the uh, assistant, special assistant, deputy, and supervising and senior attorney generals clear, then you're better than me. Um, we're here this morning because we want to talk about the importance of education. And certainly for me, uh, as the son of immigrants and the first in my family to have an opportunity to attend a university, uh, I know firsthand what it means to have a higher education degree and how it tra transforms lives and helps young people achieve the American dream. But all too often, unfortunately, there are unscrupulous players who engage in unscrupulous practices at some of our post-secondary education institutions. And there are lenders who are in cahoots who do the same thing. They turn what should be an American dream into a nightmare. Here in California, we won't stand for illegal practices that harm our students. Over the last several years, the Department of Justice here in California has fought tireless, tirelessly on behalf of students who were defrauded by Corinthian colleges. Uh, that name should ring a bell. Corinthian was a predatory institution that now is shut down because of its fraudulent practices. Corinthian intentionally targeted low-income, vulnerable individuals, folks like me who are first in their family to have a chance to go to a university or college. They did so, and they did these things through deceptive and false advertising. At the California Department of Justice, we've secured millions of dollars in debt relief for some of these former Corinthian college students who were cheated out of a quality education. And today, we take another important step forward in our efforts to help these students. Today, I'm pleased to announce that the California Department of Justice has secured an additional $67 million in debt relief for former Corinthian College students. We reached this settlement with Balboa Student Loan Trust, which holds the student loans of nearly 35,000 Corinthian students here in the state of California. Uh, if you take a look at these maps, you'll have a sense of where some of these students are located. One map shows you throughout the state of California, the, the deeper the color, the more concentrated the number of students. Obviously, if you take a look at the map that shows you Los Angeles and San Francisco, you'll see that there are thousands of former Corinthian College students concentrated in these areas. In the Bay Area, uh, some 7,500 students were, mem uh, were attendees of Corinthian College who were defrauded. In Los Angeles, more than 15,000 California students and their parents were defrauded. Our investigation found that Balboa engaged in illegal debt collection practices. That included erroneously mailing overdue notices to some of these California student borrowers. The letter stated from Balboa, and it stated incorrectly, that the accounts of these students could be subject to litigation. The settlement we announced today means that both Balboa will immediately halt collections and it will forgive 100% of the remaining loan balance of these former Corinthian College students. Let me repeat that. This settlement that we secured means that for those Corinthian College students, some 35,000 of them, Balboa will immediately stop collection actions against them, and it will 
forgive 100% of that loan that those Corinthian college students took out. Balboa is required under the settlement to refund refund more than $500,000 in payments, and it must delete all negative credit reporting associated with these loans. In the next few weeks, those nearly 35,000 students will receive a letter from Balboa in the mail informing them that their loans have now been fully forgiven. It's our hope that this will give those students a bit of comfort, some peace of mind when they get this letter. We also hope that it's a welcome change from getting a collection notice for a degree that they couldn't use. And while this is a major victory for Corinthian college students who got defrauded, we still have a ways to go. Last December, we took Department of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos to court for failing to process the debt relief claims of Corinthian students who took out federal student loans. Today, once again, I call for Secretary DeVos to do her job, do the right thing for these former Corinthian college students. But regardless of whatever Washington does here in California, we'll continue to lead the way. We won't stop fighting to protect not just California's college students, but America's college students and their parents and that American dream. It's important not just as the Attorney General that I tell you this, but it's important as a son of immigrants and the first in my family to have that opportunity to get that university degree. With that, that let me now ask Debbie Cochran to give us some words. Thank you. Um, the Institute for College Access and Success works to ensure that students have affordable paths to meaningful college educations. Corinthian Colleges, also known as Everest College, Everest University, Heald College, or Wyotech, routinely pressured students to take out expensive private loans as a means of keeping federal money flowing. They did this even knowing that over half of those students taking out those private loans wouldn't be able to repay them. They would default. In 2015, the federal court ruled that Corinthian broke the law by pressuring these students to take out loans, but borrowers have continued to be harassed into repaying them. For tens of thousands of Californians, such abusive ta tactics stop today with the settlement. While Corinthian Colleges may be the no most notorious of for-profit college companies, it is not alone in pushing students towards expensive private loans that they know we will not be able to repay. The now defunct ITT Technical Institute ins issued loans directly to students knowing more than half would default. Private and institutional loans like those issued by Corinthian Colleges, ITT, and others are riskier than federal loans in many ways. Financing, for higher education, financing higher education for private loans is more akin to paying for college on a credit card than a federal student loan. Private lo loan borrowers are not entitled to the same types of forbearances and deferments for borrowers facing short-term financial struggles. And for those facing longer-term financial struggles, borrowers of private loans aren't eligible for longer-term repayment options that allow borrowers to repay their debt based on how much they earn rather than how much they owe. Private loans are often also costlier than federal loans, and especially so for borrowers without, with less financial cushion. And whereas federal law provides federal loan borrowers the opportunity to get their loans discharged if their school closes or mistreats them, no such protections exist for private loans. In response to the unscrupulous practices of colleges like Corinthian, the Obama administration wrote new rules to ensure that students would be better protected. The gainful employment rule held colleges responsible for ensuring that students were able to earn enough after graduation to repay their debt. And the borrower defense rule outlined how mistreated students could get federal debt relief. These rules have been delayed and undercut by the Trump administration and are now being rewritten. The new administration's proposals will be released any day now and are expected to roll back student protection substantially. Without strong rules, for-profit colleges will once again be free to overcharge students for substandard educations that won't deliver. This federal retraction only underscores the importance of state actions to protect students and to make them as close to financially whole as they can be. Uh, yet the U.S. Department of Education and some in Congress seek to restrict the authority of states. 
They do not want states to be able to protect their residents against substandard student loan servicing. And the department just delayed the implementation of rules that protect states to, that position states to protect their residents against predatory colleges based in other states. The department plans to begin rewriting those rules as well beginning in this fall. So going forward, states will play a critical role in holding schools accountable for doing what's right for students and rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse occurring at student and taxpayer expense. With the federal government abdicating responsibility for the protection of students and taxpayers, the leadership of Attorney General Becerra is a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Before we start with any questions, I want to make sure Barney, yeah, Barney, get back up here. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll take any questions you might have now.